Hey folks, David Stewart here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. It's time for a bit of a movie review. It's a movie that is objectively old but feels very new to me, and that's Deadpool. But before I jump into it, don't forget to hop on my mailing list, dvspress.com slash list, or subscribe to me on Substack, which will be linked down below. And of course, you can support me on Patreon. So um, yeah, this is an old movie, but it's one that I know a lot of my subscribers enjoyed and have been wanting me to watch for years at this point. So I watched it. Uh, I didn't like it. Not only did I not like it, I rather intensely disliked it. Now, I'd like to explain why that's the case, as well as go through everything that the movie did, both positive and negative. If you want to know the main reason why I don't like it, it really comes down to uh, two things. The execution of the story, but a lot more than that, the fact that it wasn't funny. I didn't laugh a single time in this movie, and at times I actually found the movie rather boring, even with the jokes. They just don't seem executed very well. The The movie has tons of these little fourth wall breaks, these attempts at uh, Spider-Man-like um, humor, but of course like more 90s edgy, I guess, which is in... You know, it's in line with the Deadpool character as he was written in the comics. Uh, but none of those land, and they're just not funny. Maybe I'm watching it too many years after the fact, or I'm just a completely humorous old man at this point, but I just didn't find it very funny at all. It reminded me of, like, all the 90s edge Kevin Smith humor, except Kevin Smith knew how to, like, write and execute jokes and... Um, set up that timing well and none of it seemed to work in Deadpool and when humor doesn't land it produces a very strange effect and I guess the closest word would be like cringe I felt like everything was cringy like there's a discomfort to humor that doesn't work and that was the main problem with the movie more than any others so with that in mind that's the main reason why I don't like it so keep all that in mind there's other things that maybe the movie does okay or does well, and I'll get into those. So let me break it down. I like to do sometimes a by the numbers analysis, and that's what I'll do, which is just to talk about all the different things that it does and give um, what would really be like a final score to this. So the aesthetics of this, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10, which is a C, all right? I'm using a standard grading scale where like A is nine. <laughs> okay, so it's seven's like a C. Um, they work. There's nothing special about the aesthetics. The costumes don't look particularly good. Uh, we do see Colossus, uh, if you care about the Colossus character, if you remember like 80s X-Men or something like that, which is what I really remember Colossus for. In fact, I still have like my Death of Colossus comic. They bring him back, they never stay dead. Um, anyway, you know, you have Colossus in there and maybe people like to see that and he looks okay. But overall, it's just a standard aesthetic of like cities and highways and that kind of thing. There's not a lot of special sets or anything like that. So to that extent, they work, but they aren't very visually interesting or appealing. Uh, the effects I give a seven out of 10, um, they work, um, they aren't bad, but in a lot of cases they are annoying. Like with this sort of slow motion freeze framing CGI uh, heavy scenes at the very beginning of the movie. I found that very annoying and uh, really boring. Um, and this is kind of a side, um, kind of a, I guess, a tangent. The problem with some of the action scenes, especially at the beginning of the movie, is that we don't know why we should care. So what makes action tense and interesting is not merely that people are like hitting each other with swords or shooting each other with bullets, but that uh, we care about an outcome with the audience. We want to know why someone is doing that. So the why is missing and the why gets filled in later. So the effect for that first action scene, besides the bad CGI or how it looked on the TV to me, was uh, not bad, but just obviously fake and very slow. Uh, ended up being kind of boring and just not appealing. Uh, but otherwise, the, you know, the effects are okay. So I give them a 7 out of 10. The music I give a 5 out of 10, um, and that's because it's mostly what I call a pop soundtrack. It's mostly like pop songs or radio songs, and I didn't like them. Uh, so, you know, they can go either way. Like You could maybe really like the pop songs in a pop soundtrack, and then it's cool, it's your thing, or you may really dislike them, which is the case with me with this movie, and uh, the music ends up becoming annoying, but otherwise the music's not super intrusive. I give it a five out of 10, which is kind of like on the high F side. It's I feel like it was bad music choices, but um, not so bad that it like ruins the movie or anything like that. So overall the production's a 6.3, which is, uh, you know, it's in the mediocre range. 
It's not great production. It's not terrible, but compared to like MCU production um, or other superhero movies, it's on the lower side. It works for what it is. Uh, it's still a big budget movie and the effects, I guess that's how I'm judging them as compared to other uh, bigger budget movies. They work, you know? So overall, the production value is okay. It's harmed by, I think, what is um, really a just a, a soundtrack that which I didn't enjoy at all. Now we, let's get to the main problem, which is the story. Um, so I kind of break this down sometimes into like setting and exposition. Um, so the setting and exposition is a major weakness. Uh, I give it like a, f I think I give it like a six out of 10. Um, overall, the setting is fine. We don't explore a lot of the deeper Marvel setting with Deadpool. Uh, we just have enough surface level stuff to set up his origin and that's enough, that works. We don't really need more than that in the movie. So it's, uh, it's totally functional in that sense. The problem was they used an in media res beginning for this um, movie, which has been done to death. It's it's one of these things where like there if you begin with an action sequence and then you stop. It's almost like a parody at this point, and it's just like, oh, but you're wondering how I got here, you know. So that's how they they set it up, and it takes so long to get through that action sequence while while they're doing the credits, uh, and we don't know or care about. Uh, Deadpool or why he's doing that, why Wade is doing what he's doing. We get all of the backfill of that later. So we have this in media arrest where we're just clueless. We don't know what's happened. We interrupt that. Uh, we have like a voiceover with Deadpool. He goes back to explain his origin. Uh, and that entire whole origin setup with the love story. So we, we, we're not even at the A story. We don't understand the A story, the, the basic revenge plot um, until like an hour into the movie. We don't have a main conflict that's really been set up correctly. Rather, what we have is the main B story, which is like the romance. And um, the romance, I guess we'll, we'll cop into characters when we when we do this. The romance just doesn't, um, doesn't appeal to me and doesn't work. So I give the characters and the dialogue portion a 4 out of 10. The main reason it's low is because of all the jokes which don't land. Um, you have a... a, a old blind woman making nasty jokes with uh, Ryan Reynolds and none of those really work despite the absurdity of the situation should make it comedic. Just they fell flat. None of them worked. So uh, you can't have a passing grade when you are trying to make a comedy and it's not funny. Uh, but to that end, the rest of the characters are mostly functional. I didn't like the romance between Wade and I don't remember the, the girl's name. Uh, she's a prostitute. They have a, like a 90s cringe abuse off when they meet each other which isn't funny and just comes off as uh, somebody who's never been traumatized trying to make jokes about trauma if that makes any sense it just uh if it just it's weird it's it's almost perverse to have them um, in fact it is perverse for them to say that but not in a way that i would find funny uh, like if trey and matt had written had written the part you can bet that there would have been some some laughs in it, but the way it was, it just wasn't funny. Uh, and the romance wasn't believable because the entire idea of the romance is built around the idea of them having lots of kinky sex, including like uh, Wade or Deadpool getting pegged. If you don't know what that is, I guess the internet is your friend, right? All these little gross things that are just peppered with the movie that are really off-putting. That all comes from the characters. There's not really any likable characters in this movie whatsoever. Uh, there's the the nerdy bartender. He just comes off flat. Like none of the characters are good. So I give it a four out of ten. They're functional in the sense of the story. Like we do have a main character. We have a protagonist. He has a love interest that he's cares about. Uh, we have a revenge plot that he cares about that revenge and it's a meaningful motivation. We have an auxiliary character in Colossus trying to get him to be good. That's kind of the C story um, as we're kind of transitioning to plot. I give the plot a six out of 10. Again, it's functional. So the characters function for the, the setup of the plot, but otherwise they're bad and I generally don't like them. Even the villain I didn't find particularly villainous uh, or Gina Carano who mostly stands around looking kind of dour. Uh, like these characters just are all very, very flat. There's not a lot of personality to the villains, so you don't really hate them for what they're doing. They just kind of come off as like, I don't know, they're basic, they're basic, you know, Bond villain level kind of bad guys or like secondary, like, you know, Bond villain always has like the second Bond villain. They're at that level or maybe lower. They're just bland. They're just very bland. So the plot, I give it a six out of 10. It's a classic revenge story. The big problem is that we don't have that revenge story really set up until maybe an hour into the movie. And that 
I think harms overall the way that the movie comes off. Um, but you know, it's basic. There's no twists. There's no surprises with the plot. Everything proceeds proceeds exactly the way that you would want. Um, the romance is only disturbed by uh, Wade having horrible scars on his face, and the resolution, of course, is that she loves him despite his scars. That's why there's this setup about like the kinky sex thing and her being good. But we knew that it was going to resolve that way. There was never any real doubt about how anything was going to go, and there were virtually no surprises with the plot. But it was functional, so 6 out of 10. Uh, that gives the story like a 4, I think I had it as a 4.66 out of 10. That is an F, uh, and the main reason that it wouldn't get to like a 6, a passing grade, is the jokes. Uh, I just thought the jokes were bad. Okay, so general effect, that's the last area. I give it a 6 out of 10. Uh, it's a passing. You know, overall, I didn't enjoy the movie very much, but it wasn't... Uh, it wasn't in the level of where it's like actively bad and I like hate the movie. It's just a movie that the execution, it, you know, it's a really formulaic movie with not very good execution of a very specific thing that needs to happen to make it work, which is all the jokes. Um, for a lot of people, I think, who are fans of Deadpool, which is, is not really me, Deadpool was a character that I think was came to prominence after I stopped reading comics and anybody I knew read, read comics. I didn't know a single person who read comics after about 1996. Um, just to put that in, I knew people who played Battletech and D&D. I didn't know anyone who played, who read comics after 1996. So, uh, you know, he was a 90s era comic guy, I think, but I think he was after I stopped reading comics. I stopped reading comics in like in the early 90s. Um, so I don't have a, an attachment to Deadpool, but talking to some people that like Deadpool comics, they're like, this is a really good iteration of him. Like it's, a correct representation of the Deadpool that we got in the Deadpool comics. And he's a compelling enough character with his like mercenary background. It's everything feels like it's very 90s, actually, in, in not in necessarily in a good way, kind of in a cringy, edgy, like everything's trying to be very edgy, a government abusive background, and, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. And here's all of these gross jokes, and we're going to just talk about sex, and everything's going to be about sex, and, and we'll have gratuitous nudity. It feels like something from the 90s. Maybe that's a good thing for some people. Maybe that makes people nostalgic for them reading Deadpool comics back in the 90s. But because I didn't really read them and I only knew about his this character existing kind of after the fact um, from dealing with other people who are more into comics than I am as an adult, um, I don't really have an attachment to the character. I just kind of judged the movie as it was and I just didn't find it funny. I didn't think it worked. I found it very formulaic. And um, when it wasn't being formulaic, it was executing the formula poorly with like the in media rest beginning and just the long dragging exposition that happens after that. So final verdict is it's a five, it's in the like a five and a half range. I could just say it's a D minus, right? We'll bump it up to, to the D minus level. I don't think it's a total failure. I think it does a lot of things okay. And it does some things very badly for me, but I could actually see other people really liking those things, which I didn't like. So you may find it to be a better movie. You may enjoy that raunchy humor. You may enjoy the gratuitous nudity. Um, I kind of enjoyed the, the fight sequences. I thought they were a big plus to the movie. I thought the choreography was generally uh, pretty well done. And the final action sequence, though it proceeded exactly according to an 80s action formula, including the bad guy not dying the first time, uh, it was generally well executed with a decent and correct ending where Wade executes the bad guy and gets his revenge despite Colossus telling him that uh, he shouldn't do that. Uh, there's no compelling reason for him not to do that. That was the whole point of everything he was doing and uh, leaving him alive would certainly call, cause him problems later uh, like he would show up in issue two or something like that. But so it, it was the correct ending for him. They did all that well and then you know, generally speaking, I think that um, kind of tying up the third act is one of the stronger points of the of the movie at that point. So anyway, leave me your thoughts down below. I'd love to read them and see what you thought about it. That's my analysis of the first Deadpool movie. Should I watch the second Deadpool movie? Is it an improvement on the first? And in what ways is it an improvement? Because maybe I'll go uh, watch Deadpool 2. I think Ryan Reynolds was maybe a good casting choice because I think he fits the Deadpool character, but I just don't think the jokes worked. I guess that's my big negative thing about the way that that worked. So let me know and I'll talk to you guys next time. Have a great one. Don't forget 
you know, you can support me on Patreon. You get free copies of all the live rights. You get a free book every month through that. So that's a great way if you want to support my content as well as get stuff from me that is an equivalent value to that, like a free book, free ebook every month and uh, reading all this stuff as I do it live. You know, that's my big thing in 2024. We're doing it live, live music and live writing. So let me know and I will see you guys next time. Have a great, great day.